Check out all these bottles. I spent six hours digging the other day. I dug over 200 bottles and I brought over 100 home. We've finished cleaning, uh, but let me run you through how I found them. So what's up there guys, and welcome back to Digit Detecting. So as you can see, uh, we're back at the old house. Uh, and as you can also see, uh, we've got a bit of rain coming, so that's all right. Uh, what we're going to do today is uh, we are mainly going to focus our time uh, hunting bottles. Uh, bottles and marbles. So as you've seen in our last video, uh, we end up walking up to wash our hands in the water trough uh, to stop and have some lunch. Uh, and we located, uh, basically located uh, where a rabbit had been digging. Uh, and now this rabbit, as he'd been digging, uh, he'd been pulling all these shards of glass out. And as I walked past, I happened to notice it. And I thought, well, uh, that wasn't me. I didn't dig that out. And uh, look at all the glass in there. So basically that led me on to uh, pulling a few rocks back uh, in amongst here uh, and finding some bottles. These are some that we actually uh, forgot to pick up last week. So uh, basically with that, uh, finding those bottles, uh, we then went and checked on the other rock barriers, uh, a few here and uh, some up there as I was just pointing to, basically found a whole heap more bottles. Uh, we actually pulled over 40 bottles uh, and a couple of marbles there the other week and a few, a few old nice relics so in last week's video. Anyway, we are going to get the tools out, trusty little scratcher, put the gum boots on, grab the gloves, and uh, we're going to make a start. And in the last video too, uh, towards the end, the landowner told us uh, there was a few more bottle dumps way over the back there uh, and an old well. So I'm also going to go check that out uh, and hopefully before it rains. Okay, so there's the old house. I will just show you something too. Uh, for anybody that hasn't seen it, uh, the first time I ever come here, uh, I was looking at this chimney, uh, just admiring it. And I happened to look up, I'll just put the probe down, otherwise I'll drop the camera. Uh, I happened to look up anyway, and as you head up, you notice something about this chimney. Uh, you notice there's a dog paw print uh, in the brick there. See that? So shaky, there you go. That's definitely a dog paw print though, and look, I... Um, I spoke to the owner about it uh, last time when I was here. I happened to point it out to him. Uh, he had never noticed it, so really, really cool. And uh, I said to him, mate, if uh, you ever end up pulling the house down, make sure you save that brick. Uh, that's pretty cool. Oh, oh, there it is. The old well. What do I always say? Well then, it's pretty cool. Still a lot of water in it. I'd love to know how deep it is. That might be another uh, well that we could uh, throw a magnet down and see what comes of it. So, I still haven't located any bottles though. Don't know what's going on. I'm thinking, like I just sort of walked straight down from this peppercorn tree there. Uh, so I'm now going to walk up along these top of these barriers. Uh, see if I can't find some obvious signs of glass or bottles. And he did say they were over here somewhere. He just sort of pointed and said over over that next rock barrow you'll find more bottles. He said the salt bushes have grown up over them. Uh, th these bushes here, I don't know what they're called. But um, I'm just going to have to get the eagle eyes out and try and find them. I don't know where they are. But this is how you locate them. Just um, looking around, looking around. And that's how we found the last ones. So... But it does seem like a fair way away from the house. Okay, 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 okay. So, sort of stood up on that hill for about two minutes just thinking, where are all the bottles at? What's going on here? We walked over to the well. We walked up on top of all those uh, rock barriers and found nothing. And I'll sort of try and make sense of it. Why? It seems like every bottle dump was only planted under every big tree, if that makes sense. So these little sort of shrubs that you see here, these little bushes, uh, they're probably not that old. 
probably 20, 30 years old, whatever. So they may have been there, may have not been there. Uh, but it seems like the theme being that the landowners planted uh, all the bottles under the big trees that they had on the property here uh, and then threw rocks around them. Now, the only other big trees that I could see standing up on top of that hill there uh, was this guy over here. And he's dead, I know. An old Blackwood or something. But I'm walking up over here thinking that this could be another possible dumping site and I just happened to stick my head in here. Bingo! We got bottles, we got rubbish. Look, they're even just laid on the surface here. That one's not that old, I know. But, um, oh, whoa, he just fell down the rabbit hole. <laughs> uh, but yeah, look, there's some bottles in here. So uh, there's another dumping point. I can see some pretty modern trash in there too. We'll go around this side and have a bit of a look. Um, but I'll still get to get over to that big tree though. So where there's, where there's this here, there's gotta be more over that tree. Um, you can see there, oh, there's a light globe. I see quite a few bottles down there. So this will be an interesting one to, to dig out and have a look. Just having a quick look and then we're gonna go to that big tree and see what else we can spot. There's a heap more bottles down there. Would you look at that? Hello there, girls. What you all doing down here? Not an oldie again, but still cool. All right, let's go and have a look ski uh, if there's any more over there. Oh, look, the sun's out now too. What a lovely day. All right, so there's gotta be bottles under this one. Oh, somewhere, somewhere. It's the only other biggest tree on the property. So there's gotta be, like if that's if that's the natural theme, you know, um, plant a big tree throw bottles around it and throw rocks around it and rubbish oh there might even be more up there another pile of rocks hmm interesting interesting let's get around the top around the back of this there you go rubbish rubbish is a good sign tin junk oh there you go there's the bottles there's the bottles Oh, I can see a perler at the back there. Let's pull them out together, shall we? Okay, I want that one first at the back. Because he's a ripper. Oh. Limos. Look at that. Registration trademark, you know, content sold. What a beautiful bottle. Odd shape bottle too, look at that. Where's the sun? There he is. Okay, so we'll pour a few more while we got you. Uh, we got property of Lego and Co. Bendigo. Oh, that's a beauty. That is a beauty. I love it. I don't know its age, AGM, so yeah, 1920s, 30s, something like that. All sort of standard following that theme. What have we got here? What's this guy? He's a something. He had a label on the front at one stage. All gone now. Let's see what else we got. Oh, there's just bottles everywhere in here. Have to move a few rocks back. Whoa! Hello there. Better not squash the ones we've already pulled out, eh? You still do have to be careful of snakes out here too. I know it's like winter, but um, you just never know. You never know. A big old tiger snake or something, or a little brown snake curling up for winter in under one of these rocks. That would be fun, wouldn't it? And they're out here. I would not be doing this in summertime. I can hunt like you wouldn't. You could not pay me enough to be out here. Uh, in these sticks and rocks during summertime because I know what lives out here. How awesome is that? And you know, I nearly tossed to the side uh, and I gave it a double look and I thought that is so cool. Very cool. Probably off an old cast iron bed or something. I'm not really sure, but what a great piece. Okay, went down further and we got more bottles. Awesome, eh? Check that rock out though. 
he's grown into the tree. Look at that. He's actually grown up into the tree, or the trees, the rock doesn't grow, I should say. The tree's grown into it. Very cool. He might be a hard one to remove. Uh, but anyway, oh, let me get out of my little hidey hole. There it is. Uh, we've got this beauty out though. Out of all them, uh, this is my favourite. So look at that. Uh, the Beacon Trading Manufacturing Geelong. Geelong. Pretty cool. Very nice. Where's that sun? He's gone. And he's dirty. So you're not going to be able to see through him anyway. He can go up there. Because he's a ripper. So we'll get, get the rest of those sorted. And we're going to venture around and attack the other side. These have only just come from that one spot. Crazy, isn't it? Right, hey, look at these big stones. Ow, 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 ow. Bloody box on. See that stuff? Look at the prickles on it. They hurt. Right. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, what a ripper. Oh, no. No. He's broken at the top. Bugger. Look at that, though. His display's nice. You wouldn't even know he's broken. JD Connell. JDC Bendigo. Look at this little fella. What are you doing down there, mate, eh? What a beautiful little bottle. Don't know what it says at the top there. Hmm, don't know. Oh, it opens. That is so cool. A great colouring to it too. Look at that. Okay, I've got a few coming out from this site. Uh, and... Also what I just noticed, always keep your eyes out for these. And the reason being is as you can see, uh, this little neck that's been broken off, well, he's still containing the glass stopper. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I love these. I've got probably about 30 of them now at home, uh, probably more. And I love finding them and I always keep my eyes out. Even if it is a broken bottle, I will still keep my eye out because uh, generally sometimes they'll thrown out and discarded uh, with the little glass stopper still inside and uh, this little fella's still got the cork surrounding him So very cool. Very cool a real pain It just seems like I'm not meant to have one of these uh, An essence of coffee and chicory bottle a real real shame because I found three now. However, they're all broken. Let me show you Broken <laughs> And none of them match either broken and broken so you can see there, essence of coffee uh, and chicory. And three of them, all broken. Okay, so that's it. We've got all our bottles in the car uh, and even our little fist guy. Um, anyway, and little green bottle. I love that one, really nice. And my favorite for the day uh, would have to be this Lemos one. I just love the shape. I love the design, the embossing. I don't even know how old it is. Uh, he's got the AGM castles. He's not that old. And he's got a screw top on the top, as you can see. Anyway, uh, we're going to keep doing a bit more digging uh, and hit up that other bush where I left the uh, the pouch and the gloves. So have some lunch first. Okay, so we've got a few bottles out there already, just uh, pushing our way in here. And as you can see, we're in. Oh, look at that. we got another Lemos bottle. You ripper. You ripper. Oh, that's two of them now. Even better. I said that was my favourite bottle for the day, and we just found a second one, intact. Okay, we got so much going on in this hole, it's not bloody funny. It's crazy. There is bottles everywhere. Old Tarax, Pyro, he's a nice one, pity he's broken. Yeah, all the best ones are broken, like always. Uh, check out this little guy, our little Bovril. Bovril Limited. Two ounce, made in England. Pretty cool little bottle, isn't he? And uh, we also had these fellas here. We had a Geelong uh, and Preserves Co. Uh, tomato sauce. You see there, Geelong and Preserving Co. And we also had a beautiful uh, white crow. You can see the crow featured on the front there. Uh, it looks like there's a snake, a snake there right beside him that he's uh, going to attack. Uh, white crow tomato sauce. What a ripper. But look what someone's done to the top of both of them. Broke them. 
Oh well, never mind. Look at our little bottle stash we've got going over here. They're the ones we're going to be taking out today, and we are going to be keeping those too. Oh, here's a nice one. Ho oh, oh, ho, yeah, intact old beer bottle, whiskey bottle. Beautiful. You ripper, you ripper. And that is the same as this one here, um, and what I was hoping to find intact. I've got a few of these at home, but I always love finding them. Nothing too special, pretty common, but who doesn't love finding an intact old bottle? Better put the old bovril over there too. See what else we can find, shall we? You know, in some respects, this is almost more fun than uh, using the detector. Um, not for everybody, I'm sure, but it, it can be a lot of fun. It can be a lot of fun. You know, you just don't know what is going to come next. So, hopefully, hopefully an old snaps bottle. God, I'd love to find one of them today. Or a marble. We'll keep going. Oh, well, well, well. Would you check out this guy? Ah, that is awesome. Look at that. Now that's showing a bit of age. That is awesome. I don't know what he says down there. I've got to, uh, is it Dalton Lambeth? Something Dalton Lambeth. Oh, that is a ripper. That is a bloody ripper. That is my best bottle for the day. Wow, I don't even want to just put, sit him down. I'll sit him down there and I'll show you some of the other things I found too. The old bench mincer. So that would have been uh, clamped to the bench. And look at that. Stick your fingers in that, would you? So pretty cool, the old bench mincer. How, uh, how often would that have been used? So Especially on a farm. Oh, I can't believe I just found that. Old clay clay bottle. Um, he was just sitting, as you can see, he was just sitting here. I was pretty much standing on it. So and they're still coming out. They are still coming out. We got Melbourne. Uh, can't read them probably with the dirt on them. Cremorne Preserving Co. Melbourne, 13 ounces. He's a cool one too. God, why are they all broken though? He's actually. Oh, a bit of a purpley colour to him. Look at that. Wow, look at this cracker. I was just standing on him too. God. He's an oldie. He's very nice. No embossing. An old wine bottle. He can go up there too. Because I don't want to break him. I was just standing on him. How's that? Oh, there's something in that. Liquid. Yuck. It's just all types of stuff in here. All types of stuff. Look, we've got a hair comb. <laughs> There's got to be marbles in here. I know it. It has to be. 100%. we just got to find them. And what I do to find marbles too, it's sort of a bit of a method I've got. I uh, mend something. And what I do is I build a bit of a ramp like this, and I just keep pulling up the items and letting them roll down. Now, marbles being round, uh, they will just come up with your fingers and then roll back down into the hole and you should be able to spot them and that's what I do and that's how I find them but we haven't got any yet so we'll keep looking okay so we're sort of getting to the end of this one as you can see he's part of an old oil lamp kerosene lamp as you can see though uh, we've been digging like crazy I've got a few good bottles out um, a lot of broken stuff though which is a real shame, a real shame. Look at this cracker. You got the pick there. Geez, that would have suited me perfectly. Absolute perler. The embossing on that is so nice. I've never seen one like that before. Still going. We're still pulling stuff out. Look at this old light switch. Oh, it doesn't work. No wonder it got thrown out. That's an interesting one. Would have been like a little cup. It's been coated in something though, like tar. Interesting. Anyway, we're going down to this bottle here, as you can see. We're probably going to lose half of our stack up there in a minute. Let's put him back up a bit more. I don't want all the good ones falling back into the hole. Oh, check out the comb I found. Special. It's made out of rubies, I bet. Uh, put all those bottles back up there. Look at how many we got. We're going to take home dozens of bottles today. Now, I love finding them, but do you know what that means? It also means more cleaning. 
I'm going to have to get a tumbler, a bottle tumbler soon, because uh, it's a lot of effort and work tumbling, uh, cleaning these old bottles, as you can imagine. Oh, we've done it. We've got a complete embossed Rosella Preserves Melbourne bottle. <laughs> uh, it's not the White Crow one that we were after before. Um, however, what a bloody pearler. I'm glad a rock didn't fall down and break him. Okay, that's it for that hole. Uh, we're out of there. Oh, actually, no, it's not. I can see something. Uh, we've got a glass top stopper. We've got a glass lid. No embossing, but that's very cool. I don't think we left any other bottles. We are coming back here, as I said. Uh, we will back, be back here within the next few days. So uh, I'm going to dig out the rest of those rocks because I do believe uh, it goes further up. So anyway, that's what we got for round two. Okay, so we're attacking, uh, attacking the dump right next to the house and look what I just found. Woo -hoo -hoo. Now I've got one of these before. I found one of these many, many years ago underneath a big solid rock uh, out in the gold fields. Right, uh, I think we've found the next place to be. Uh, we've got an old tonic bottle here. They're not too old. It's got a screw top. Uh, you can see the tonic bid mark. So, and we're just going to be scratching around here. I think I've located a few more there, you see. Uh, and there was another one up here somewhere. Where was he? There. There, so let's pop him out. Oh, he's a ripper. He's a Fowler's. I've got a few of these. The old Fowler's. Pretty cool. Oh! Oh! You beauty. I've got a little cobalt, 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 blue. Struggle saying that. Why do I struggle saying that? Wow. You ripper! That's our first uh, blue bottle today. We got one there the other week too. Uh, we had the old castor oil bottle, which I'd been after for some time. So many, many years I've been picking up uh, castor oil bottle glass and never found a complete one until last week. And what a ripper it was too. Right, oh, so that's it. That is uh, what, round three, round four? I'm not quite sure. I've lost track. I've, I've tugged that many bottles today. I think I've dug the most bottles today than I've ever dug in my life. Uh, and what have we been going for? About four hours. So not too bad, not too bad at all. Uh, we'll start at the top here. Look, you're going to see these at the end of the video. Um, basically, once we get home, give them a clean up. However, we'll just run you through them quickly. So uh, get to see what they look like coming out of the ground. So we had the little cobalt blue bottle. Uh, we had the swan ink four ounce had the old vinegar bottle there he's a beauty um what do you say tonic bottle this one was a rosella preserving jar so another nice one pretty much intact apart from a chip up the top there which is a bit of a shame i didn't see him as i was pulling him out and then i uh, thought you beauty and then seen the top and thought bugger anyway uh we had this one too what a cracker and uh unfortunately once again uh, it's broken Anyway, something something Hop Beer Co. I'm going to do a bit of research on that one, see what he looked like uh, when I get home. Uh, little no namer, oh no, sorry, Fowler's, uh, little Fowler's bottle. Uh, another no namer, uh, the old beer bottle. Beautiful, beautiful. I've found, uh, found a few of these today. It's been a good day. Okay, so uh, what do we got? Uh, a bit after four o'clock uh, on the watch and I've pretty much packed up. I've pretty much got the bottle probe and all my tools in the car. Apart from this guy, he's my friend. Uh, anyway, when I spoke to the landowner last week, and the car the car is sort of whoop over that hill. Uh, and when I spoke to the landowner last week, he said, oh, look, uh, I said, oh, I found the old well. You can see the well there. There's an old bore well. Uh, so they would have drilled a bore into the ground, probably 80, 100 feet, whatever, and tapped, tapped uh, uh, a water, tap, tap for water, I should say. Long story short though, when I spoke to the owner, I said to him, oh look, I found the well mate, and uh, he said, oh, and I explained to him about the bottles and how we found them and dug them out around the tree and we, we put the rocks back and uh, neatened it up again for him. He's like, yeah, no worries, whatever. He said, oh, there's, there's more bottles uh, over here too, fellas, and he sort of just went, he just sort of pointed that way, he said, oh, over towards that well, 
uh, over on the next rock barriers. Well, you can see this is one rock barrier here, and I would presume that he was talking over on the next uh, rock barrier, which you can see uh, is sort of that mound there on my finger. Anyway, so long story short, uh, I thought to myself, hmm, hmm, I might just go for a walk over quickly and just double check uh, what he was saying. Because he said there was bottles everywhere, mate. He said the grass has sort of grown up over him now. But he said there were so many bottles over the back there. And, well, this is what we looked for this morning, and we could not locate it. But here it is. We've just found it. And how I found it was this bit of tin uh, hanging out. A dead giveaway. Where there's tin, there's bottles. Where there's bottles. Or where there's tin, there's rubbish. Where there's rubbish, there's bottles. So generally how it works. Anyway, uh, my car's chock-a-block full of bottles. I'm sure I can fit more in. But, um... What we might do is we might save a lot of these, you know, I'm not greedy, I don't want to take them all in one day. Um, why not uh, have a bit of fun and, and come back and, and pick a few more up later. So what we might do is just pick a few off the top of the surface, uh, anything that we can see that we really, really like. Uh, and then anything else we're going to leave, uh, we're going to leave for a later date. So, and come back, they are just everywhere. They're not even buried here either. Look at that, some really nice bottles, they're not even buried either, as I said, they're just, they're just there, they're just sticking up out of the ground everywhere, and look at this, oh. I don't see that old of bottles there, however that was how the, uh, the other old bottle pit started out, you know, it started out pretty new on top, as we got down we got some of the older stuff, so uh, we'll just see how we go. Hopefully I can get another whole brook uh, like the one that I broke there the other week. Ah, uh, look at the little perfume bottle. Potter and more Co. It's still got perfume in it. Right, Righto, we opened it up a bit. Um, we've been at it for 11 minutes. Only 11. Pretty good, eh? And uh, check out what we got. Boom! Probably more bottles in 11 minutes. Uh, they're nearly what we've got all day. Check out this big baby. Oh my lord. Wow. A 26 ounce Rosella preserving. Oh, you ripper. What a bloody ripper. He's made my day too. What a good day. Hey, check this one out. We've got an old Holbrook. And this one isn't broken. So the one last week that I had, uh, he had a bit of a, a stress crack. Uh, sort of in the guts there and basically when he fell over he snapped in two so I've been looking all day today uh, looking for a complete Holbrook and Co nothing that special but I just wanted one because I had a complete one and I broke it whoops so anyway we've just found one there's a nice little poison bottle too not to be taken we're gonna take him right oh sun's going down look at that it's quite a nice picture actually so that means uh, I'm running out of daylight. I've probably got half an hour left of daylight. But look what I've uh, unearthed. Wow. Isn't that crazy? And that's all just within. Uh, what did I say before? It was about 10 past 4 or something or whatever. It was 4 o'clock. So what's that? Half hour, 40 minutes. We found all these. So look, there's probably only about a dozen here that I want too. Uh, all of them aren't that special. However, I have pulled them all out because uh, I know my mate. Uh, he'll probably want a few of them too. He's uh, slowly starting to build up his collection. So there's a lot here that I've already got that I'm not interested in doubling up on. However, he will be uh, interested in taking. So what did I say? Cord to five. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more poking around just on that backside. So we've just sort of ripped through really quickly and took off the top layer. And look, we've still got more bottles in there. I still haven't even pulled them out. Rawleys, trademark. Uh, Pyretho fly killer. So, very cool. Very cool. They must have had a fly problem out here. I can't see why. Dairy farm, sticks and rocks. Hmm, no flies out here. Is this not the cutest little not to be taken poison bottle you've ever seen in your life? Look at him. Hello there, little guy. And we've got Big Daddy right beside him. <laughs> Uh, that is awesome. He's the smallest one I've ever found. I've found all the other uh, shapes, uh, sizes, but I haven't found him yet. So very cool, very cool. This is why I'm just having a bit of a pot around at the moment. I uh, I wouldn't be able to sleep tonight if I didn't do this. I uh, 
wouldn't be able to go home, physically not, would not be able to leave and go home and uh, leave these here. You know what, I'd like to think that someone, uh, the pe people that put all this here, I'd like to think they knew that I was coming back to do this one day. Uh, I'd like to think that they come here and said, right, there's going to be a young fella here in uh, 50 years' time digging these out, and uh, let's make it easy for him. Let's just throw them on the surface. So, how cool is that? Another little poison bottle. Oh, 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 that's number two. And check out this big stonker. He's a lemos. Recognise that guy anywhere. That's number three for the day. Three lem lemoses. So, very cool. Very cool. I'm going to have to... Oh, there you go. Lightsaber. We've got a lightsaber. Vroom, 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 vroom. Whoa. Oh, geez, I'm hanging, holding up the wrong way. I'll probably cut my hand off. Vroom. There you go. Made in Hong Kong. That's not very old. Old torch. It's not a, not a lightsaber at all. Oh, I knew it wasn't. As I said before, I know they're not all that old. You know, a lot of these would be sort of from the 1930s upwards. Uh, however, how cool. How cool. Just nice little bottles. All British. Lysol. Okay, this guy's a beauty. Another not to be taken. But he's blue. Cobalt blue. Ha ha ha. And we had another little not to be taken. He's even littler again. Tiny. Not to be taken. Not to be taken. Asperals. They have made my day. Got no sun left. Yeah, he's going to clean up very nice. Very, very nice. Woohoo! Okay, we are done. And I mean it. We are really done now. I've, uh, I've had enough. My back is killing me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to retrieve the few, uh, a few good bottles that we've got uh, here. So you can see here just after uh, we last uh, filmed, we pulled a few other uh, items out, this old uh, tobacco tin. Look at the condition too, it's beautiful, beautiful. A few other little uh, containers, another Bovril, which is nice because the one that we got before was broken. Uh, a few other bits and, bits and bobs there. Another little poison bottle. Anyway, we've got to try and get them back to the car now. So I'm going to go grab the car, and uh, I think it might just be best if we just drive it around here. That makes sense, wouldn't it? Righto, so we are slowly picking up the bottles. Uh, we could not get the car over here. So I've just got a bag out of my car, and we're slowly putting them in the bag and taking them over to the uh, to the car. Never mind. I, uh, I could probably get the car in here uh, through these rock barriers. However, it's a bit of an effort, a bit of a struggle bumping and bouncing over these rocks so i've just decided to do it by foot anyway um as i said a lot of these are going to be left here for brandon to pick through uh whatever he doesn't want will uh will take and will bin so i'm just going to pick out a few more that i want uh, put them in the bag and we're going to get out of here and i have no doubt we've got well over 100 bottles today uh, so stay tuned once we get home we're going to clean them up and we're going to give you a look at them all uh, together right oh off with the gum boots back on with the comfy boots I just want to give you a bit of a look. Uh, just turn the light on there. Look at what we've got. Bottles, bottles, more bottles. Oh, and a banana. That's not a bottle. So all those bottles in there we've got. We've got the beautiful old vinegar bottle hiding in my boot so he doesn't break on the way home because we are a little way from home. And uh, we've also got bottles. Da -da 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 -da. Look at them all. That... Uh, a bag's full of bottles. And then, if we make our way into the front of the cab, more bottles. And my favorite for the day, the old clay, the old ceramic. Beautiful, beautiful. What a lovely day. What a lovely day. And as you can see, we've got no more sun left. So that is a picture and a half too. Done, just took a picture of that. Righto, um, as I said, we're gonna get out of here and get going home. Okay, so welcome back guys. As you can see, uh, it's the next day. So, and look what we've got here in front of us. Bottles. 
well over 100. I did a quick count, there's a bit over 108. I did dig well over 200 bottles yesterday, however these are just the ones that we brought home. Uh, this guy would have to be a favourite of mine. He's a, a Dalton Lambeth and I did a little bit of googling last night and with that spout on the top he actually used to contain, he's an old ink bottle, uh, so he'd have the ink and you'd pour the ink out as needed. So no wonder we only found one because how many of those would you uh, commonly go through uh, as opposed to you know your, your beers and your cordials and your poison bottles so uh, anyway we'll go we'll clean all these up and we'll give you a bit of a look at the end of the video uh, as I mentioned and I was also wondering uh, where are the rest I know there's a lot here however there's some bottles that I know that I had more of such as uh, three lemoses we've only got two there uh, two beer bottles well, we've only got one there and um, I was wondering where are they where are they and look, it was pretty late when I got home last night. It was about 9 o'clock. Uh, so I got them out in the dark. And I think I might have missed some. We got them out of the back. Got them out of the back seat. I got them out of the boot. Got them out of the back seat. And uh, thinking, where are the rest? Well, bingo. We found them. There's my third Lemos. Uh, there's my second beer bottle. And a few other neat ones in there. Uh, we're going to get them all out and clean them up. The old Rosella preserving uh, Melbourne. He's a cracker. Beautiful condition. No chips, no cracks. Perfect. So anyway, we're going to um, get all these out, uh, make a day at home today, clean them all up and go from there and give you a look at the end of the video. So pretty impressive though, got a little over uh, 108 bottles, so very, very cool. And don't forget the meat mincer. Okay, okay, uh, as you can see, we've finished cleaning and uh, what, a, what a big job that was. However, uh, we have here 106 bottles uh, ready to go inside into the collection. So what a big day it was. Uh, awesome. Anyway, we're going to take you through and give you a bit of a look over uh, what we've got here. We threw two out. Uh, reason being is, uh, look, they just weren't worth cleaning. They were stained inside and they weren't nothing special. So we threw two out uh, and we've got four crack ones that we're going to give you a look over. One being actually a, uh, a cod bottle. I didn't actually recognize him before. Let's give you a bit of a look at him now. Uh, you can see there uh, he's got the um, trademark Geelong. Uh, and it was, I can't remember what, uh, I'll throw a picture up on the screen there, top left, uh, but basically you'll be able to see what he used to look like, but it was something, uh, hot beer, uh, Code Geelong, uh, very, very nice bottle, as you can see, he would have been a, uh, a cod bottle, you can see there the neck is starting to come in, uh, which is exactly where the marble sat, uh, just in that little slot there, so, a bit of a shame, I'm sure, probably a young kid, uh, being that there was plenty of other marbles found at that site. I'm sure a young kid smashed him to get the marble out. Anyway, anyway, let's take you through uh, some of the bottles. Now, these are some of the oldest, uh, starting from left. Here, you can see the kick up in the bottom uh, on him. So, a bit of false marketing there. You thought you were getting more more than what you actually were. However, uh, uh, you, were, you weren't. Uh, this is called a blob top uh, or a screw top. You can see there where he's been... Uh, basically, if it focuses, you can see there where he's been sort of screwed on uh, crudely. So this puts him uh, around uh, and even the uh, the bubble there in the glass. So you can see, you probably see a few of them actually. Uh, but that sort of puts him around the late 1800s. Uh, probably, yeah, look, probably 1880, 1890 I would say for him. Uh, you've got the beautiful old Rosella uh, Preserving uh, Company jar. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at the Rosella on the front. Uh, these are actually some of the, um, as you get up through to the 1900s, uh, following through to you know, 1920s, what have you, there can actually be some of the most collectible bottles. You know, a lot of people think that it's all in the 1800s. However, it's not because a lot of them are, are clean skins, meaning there's nothing on them. Uh, it was up through to the 1900s uh, and, and, you know, through to the 1920s sort of thing uh, until the labels started coming in. That's when some of these bottles had really amazing uh, embossing and can be quite collectible. So quite valuable. Anyway, we've got the old Lemos bottle. We've got three of them there, as you can see, and uh, all different colours. You can see there, they've just um, they've just changed colours over the years. A different shade of green, and that one's uh, see-through. And that's all due to the glass, basically. Uh, UV exposure, as you'll see here with this purple one. I can't remember what the uh, the impurity is basically in the glass uh, or the chemical or whatever it is but there's something in the glass that they did at the time I can't remember what it was called um, throw, throw a comment up in the uh, 
section below if you can remember uh, basically um, it, 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 the UV exposure starts turning them purple or pink whatever you want to call it uh, pretty cool though I actually like that look I really like it you can see this guy here has got the same thing um, just clean skin but very nice so very nice very cool um, what else do we have I won't pick them all up I'll just run through them uh, just some of my favorite ones here this one here is a it's hard to hold them up to the Sun and, and get a good look but this is a Geelong aerated uh, water company so a bottle so it would have been aerated water he's got the internal thread up the top uh, meaning basically something like this little internal thread cork uh, would have screwed into him so really cool really cool uh, love the old aerated water bottles very cool uh, this is what this would be too this would have been an aerated water i'd imagine uh, and he's jdc uh, connell bendigo what a ripper what a ripper of a bottle that was the one that we found in the water tank too and he was already unfortunately broken but anyway uh, i believe these are cordial some of the later cordial bottles gambles uh Murrumbina, uh the old uh, kick up in the bottom of this one, once again, you can see the kick up in the bot in the base, uh, but clean skin, and he would have been a, a blob top, once again, screw on top, sort of late 1800s, once again, same as that, uh, that one over there. Uh, we have the old salad dressing or vinegar bottle, not quite sure, maybe oil, uh, and you see this one too here, he's got the M on the base, that M stands for Melbourne. Uh, Melbourne Glassworks basically and later on they changed their name to AGM Australian Glass Manufacturers uh, as they basically started distributing and having more uh, distribution uh, bottle making companies all throughout Australia they changed their name to AGM later so the early M uh, this is an early one too once again late 1800s uh, kick up base uh, clean skin uh, but the early M that you're seeing there on this guy uh, that M sort of dates from uh, look, around uh, 1900 to 1915, so you can sort of say they were a World War One era bottle. Uh, and then once you get through, uh, they actually change the, 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 the design again, and it's sort of like a, an A uh, and then a G on top, and then an M on top of the A and the G. So it's A, G, M all on top of each other. And that sort of ran through from, you know, 1910, uh, 1922. And then what we currently see, uh, most commonly see, uh, is this AGM uh, little castle that you see there and he sort of ran from about 1930 onwards so AGM uh, anyway so that sort of ran from 1930 onwards and look uh, Melbourne was uh, Melbourne Glassworks company was around from the late 1870s I think it was 1872 or something uh, so however they would just stamp their bottles uh, or some I think early on they didn't stamp them at all and then the other ones they just stamped uh, well this guy you can see there a G M so that was one of the other early designs uh, just the, the easy uh, a G M so anyway we'll keep going what else have we got and look I could be a bit wrong on that that's only just what I've learned so I could have my dates a little bit misaligned on that but that's just my knowledge of it um, this has got the old Legos bottle um, what else what else what else look at all the flasks flask bottles that we dug up just heaps all different sizes uh, an amazing amount of little flask bottles there so really really cool this one's actually very cool um, whoa uh, he's got Rollies written on him so Rollies little bottle of Rollies um, try and fix that up now trying to break them uh, this one was the old Fowlers pretty collectible Fowlers not bad, nice little bottle, cleaned up very nice. Uh, this one's interesting, he would be late uh, 1800s. Uh, little Melbourne uh, chemical, Iona. Uh, registered trademark down the bottom, he's got nothing on the base. I've sort of studied these uh, as I've been cleaning them. But he would have been a little cork top. Beautiful little bottle. And look at the impurities uh, in the glass, the crudeness in the impurities in the glass. You see those little bubbles through it. It's sort of got that transparent uh, look about it. Very cool, very cool. And that's another good way to date uh, earlier bottles. So we had the uh, little Pex mustard container. He's pretty cool and he's actually smaller 
than the one that I got the other week. So he'll go cool uh, on display with the other guy. So uh, what else do we have? A little Swan Swan Ink bottle, four ounce Swan Ink. Uh, we had the Dalton Lambeth, big guy. Uh, you see the spout up the top there, Dalton Lambeth. So he would have been an ink bottle for pouring ink. Uh, we had the two vinegar bottles. This one's a really cool color. And then uh, the darker brown beside him. So both the same, get that, eh? Pretty cool. Just go show the difference in the glass. Um, little cobalt blue jar. This is actually made by Pinnacle. I'm pretty sure it was Pinnacle. Uh, it's got the triangle. Pinnacle uh, was another company, glass manufacturing company. Uh, had the other little green jar. Look, I still have the lids for these two. I have kept the lids. So um, I'll give them a clean up. We had all the little, um, uh, these would have been like makeup, uh, cream, moisturizer, containers, uh, the old Lysol, uh, Boots All British bottle, pretty cool. Um, and moving down through to here, had the Powers, balsam, balsam and seed, pretty cool. Unfortunately, uh, little neck was broken when we found him. Real shame because he's a such a cracker bottle. Great design, and I struggled because I uh, the rocks got jammed up in there. I had to stick a little coat hanger in and, and drag them out. Uh, look at all the Bonningtons. We got one, two, three, four, five Bonningtons uh, Irish cough syrup medicine. Uh, we also got the little Sydney chemical bottle. Uh, what else do we get? A couple of Niles and all the little poison bottles. Now aren't they cool? Aren't they cool? And look at this little fella. Uh, I didn't think I could get one any smaller, and I have. I've got about 30 of them now, 30, 40, 50, something like that. I've got a, a, a big collection of the poison bottles now, uh, just because they were so common, so common. But uh, we don't have one of these, so this is our first one. Uh, Cobalt Blue, once again. However, he has been through the fire. Uh, I've scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed on this guy as much as I can. I've tried to get that fire sort of black tain tar off. And uh, so you can see through him. That's about the best we can do. He almost looks purple, doesn't he? No, it almost looks black. So pretty cool though, pretty cool. He'd look awesome with a light stuck down inside him. Um, had the fist, how cool is that? Um, very, very nice old fist. I'll put him in some molasses, stop him rusting any further. A couple of glass stoppers. Now this one's really cool and I didn't notice this, but this is a Holbrook and Co. Uh, and this matches up to, where is he, where is he, where is he? Where's my Holbrook & Co bottle? Why am I always missing this bottle? Oh, there it is. It's funny, because when I went to clean them, I still missed the bottle. And I went back in the car and it was tucked down the seat. So, it just means, like, this, this bottle's just been, like, it's nothing that special. It's a Holbrook. It's quite, it's pretty collectible. Uh, but it's nothing that special. Uh, it's quite old, it's actually got the Owens ring mark on it, so that dates at around 1900 to 1920. So see that stamp impression on it? Uh, that was basically from a machine uh, they called the Owens machine, invented by a fella last name Owens, and uh, that, that ring is basically called the Owens ring, and that sort of dates the bottle. Um, sort of 1900 to 1920. However, in saying that, you've got to remember some glass manufacturing companies, uh, they might have still been using old machinery so at the time. So anyway, Holbrook & Co. and uh, bottle, and we've got the glass stopper with him. So that was uh, almost meant to be that guy, although it doesn't look like it fits. Although he would have had a cork on him too, remember? So anyway, very cool. We're also going to give you a look at uh, what was in the in the, the tin here. I thought it might have been leg, lead slug gun pellets. However, I'd, well, as I was opening it, I was thinking, that's a tin of boot polish. Because uh, <laughs> I remember uh, polishing my boots for school when I was a kid. Uh, well, that's what it was. Black boot polish. So, anyway, we'll leave that there. We also had the old, uh, what is it, State Express cigarettes. Um, tobacco tin. Very cool, uh, in great condition too. Like it was, I don't know how it's sort of not all dinted and rusted and what have you. Uh, last piece too, uh, the old mint meats. Uh, meat mincer, I said that wrong, didn't I? Uh, would have been clamped on the bench, uh, like so. Like so, now you can see, would have been clamped on the bench like so, and you would have spanned the handle uh, and minced up your fingers. I mean meat. <laughs> anyway, uh, a few more. The old Clemens tonic, 
not bad, nicely embossed bottle. Uh, we had the old Rosella chutney. I'm trying to uh, work out the best way to hold these so you can see the embossing and labeling properly because it's not the easiest. So Rosella chutney, beautiful Rosella sitting on the branch again. And Melbourne, unfortunately, he did have a bit of a bite missing out of the top of him. I was lucky, I didn't, out of all the bottles I've cleaned here, I did not break or chip any of them. So I was very, very uh, careful. And um, unlike the whole brook that we broke last time, but granted it did have a little chip in it. Anyway, last bottles I was going to show you were these ones that were unfortunately broken when we found them. However, I wanted to bring them home and uh, basically just clean them up to give you a look. And look, I might even put them on display in the shed. Uh, they won't be going inside. I just don't have the room, especially room for broken ones. So, unfortunately, anyway, uh, we had the old um, Melbourne preserving jar, uh, the white crow tomato sauce. He would have been a cracker. Uh, damn, I really wish he was intact. Uh, a nice little 13 ounce tomato sauce. You see there the crow uh, pecking on the snake. And that's what I mentioned before. You know, this 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 guy, all all these would be sort of uh, 1900s uh, onwards, uh, through to the probably the 20s, 30s, not even 30s, probably 20s. And that's what I was saying before, the emb embossing that they were doing uh, at that time is just really, really incredible. Uh, some of the designs and, and, and logos and uh, marketing ploys that they put on the front is just beautiful. Uh, this one's a Geelong one. Um, Geelong and WD Preservatives uh, Company Tomato Sauce. So... Uh, once again, uh, G long, G long, really cool embossing. Uh, once again, broken though. Anyway, anyway, this uh, this uh, cod bottle though, uh, this is the only one that I've found there. And look, I haven't found too many uh, 1800s bottles there. A lot of them are sort of 1900 through to 1940s, 50s sort of thing. Like majority of 1900 through to 1930s. However, there is a little bit of that later stuff. And we are finding a little bit of that earlier stuff. So with that cod bottle there, and look with a few of these other bottles that are sort of touching on uh, late 1800s, that gives me a lot of hope uh, that there's, there's, there's more there basically. So we're going to go back uh, and, and uh, have another shot and go from there. So anyway, guys, uh, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, it's, it's been a couple of days in the making uh, due to cleaning all these. But um, yeah, look, I've really enjoyed it and we're going to get back out for more soon. And I'll just show you quickly uh, what I've been doing is because I need somewhere to store all these um, bottles. So I managed to pick up myself a display case. Cost me nothing either. All I had to do was bring it home, go pick it up. And I've just finished varnishing it. And uh, we're going to put it inside. Because uh, it's a great size for bottles, isn't it? Those big ones will fit down there. And uh, look, we're not going to get them all in there. Because I've got... I have so many bloody bottles now. It's, it's, getting, it's getting beyond a joke. I mean, we've still got all these, all these... A couple up there, those, a couple up there, these, them, uh, and we're running right through to there. And look, I've still got another probably 30-odd inside already, so uh, we are running out of room. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed, guys, and uh, that's about a wrap-up for us today, and uh, we'll see you next time. So now, to get all these inside.